Hi everyone, so this is version 1 of my adjustable fantasy body parts, and these allow you to easily create customizable wings, horns, ears, and tails, and attach them to any character you want. The fantasy body parts come included with version 1.3 of the adjustable mannequin, but it's also available as its own product if you don't want the mannequin. There's quite a bit to cover, so in the description you'll find links to all the different sections, but for now I'll just give you a quick overview of the basic features. So to start off, the horns and tails are both geometry node systems, and all you have to do is draw the shape that you want, and the curve and mesh will be generated for you. You can manipulate the curve points to modify the shape or change some of the geometry node settings to create different horn or tail styles. The wings are another geometry node system, but a bit simpler. Again, all you do is draw the shape of your wings, and it will create a solid mesh for you, and from here you can start sculpting to add more details to flesh out the shape. Remember, this is designed to be a base mesh. It won't create fully modelled and rigged wings for you, this is just to give you something to start from. Lastly, the customizable ear is a fully modelled ear with a rig that allows you to push and pull the different points to create different ear shapes. I've also included a few ear presets to choose from. Again, just select the ear preset you want and it will be applied to the mesh. Each of the geometry node systems have their own settings and parameters that can be changed. In a second, you'll see examples showing you all the different geometry node settings for the horns and how they affect the look of the model. When you load the file, you'll see an existing set of horns. You can modify these in edit mode and move, scale, or rotate the points, or delete the horn, and as explained at this time in the video, draw a new horn. The vertex amount controls the number of loops along the length of the horn curve. If the horn you created is very long, it may need more vertices along its length to make it smooth. Alternatively, you can turn this down for a more low-poly look. Turning up the vertex amount will also be important for the ridges and twisting as you need more detail to get the full effect of those controls. The horn base size control adjusts the size of the base of the horns. The horn tip size control adjusts the size of the tip of the horns. The ridge size control changes the size of the ridges on the horns. This will be used in combination with the ridge amount setting to create ridges along the horn. The ridge amount controls how many ridges there are along the length of the horn. If you don't see anything, you'll need to turn up the ridge size and increase the vertex amount to create more ridges. This is also proportional to the amount of vertices you have, so if you want more ridges, turn up the vertex amount. It works best when the vertex amount is divisible by the ridge amount, so if the vertex amount is set to 256, the ridge will work best at 128, 64, or 32, but feel free to play around with it. The horn length control changes how long the horn is. This will essentially just cut the horn while maintaining all of the ridges or twists. The horn profile setting allows you to choose a horn profile. These horn profiles are simple curved circles, but you can adjust the shape of them, and this will change the overall shape of the horn. By default, there are two horn profiles, round and square, but you can adjust these or create your own. The profiles start with dot horn so that they show up at the top of the list. Changing the horn profile allows you to change the overall shape of the horns, and you can do this with a curved circle. By default there are two, but if you want to create a custom one, you can create a new curved circle, and you may need to scale it down so it's roughly the same size as the two default ones. To quickly and easily modify the shape of the curved circle, you can change the transform pivot to individual origins, and then scaling all of the points will turn the circle into a square by tightening up the bezier handles. The twist amount control allows you to twist the horn along its length. The twisting isn't very visible with the round horn profile, so change it to square and you'll be able to see the twisting. As well as the square profile, you may need to adjust the vertex amount if the model looks too sharp. The material setting allows you to select a material to apply to the horns. Geometry nodes objects don't use the materials that are set up on the object, you have to manually assign it. The tails geometry node system is very similar to the horns, the only difference is that we can change the shape at the tip of the tail, so I'll only cover the new parameters. The tip shape control allows you to change the shape at the end of the tail. Setting this to zero will remove the tip. For some of the tips like the shark or mermaid, you'll need to change the tail size and the tip size to make them fit correctly. The tip scale allows you to change the size of the shape at the end of the tail. The twist amount control allows you to twist the tail along its length, but this is also very useful for rotating the tip of the tail. Usually minor adjustments will allow you to rotate the tip of the tail to face the camera, for example. I've mentioned drawing curves a few times, but how do we actually do it? In order to draw the horns, tails, or wings, you have to use the Draw Spline tool. With the horns or tails selected, enter Edit Mode, and on the left-hand side, find the Draw Spline tool, but be careful not to select the Annotate tool, as they look very similar. Now with the Draw Spline tool, simply draw your shape. You can play around with the tool options at the top if you'd like. If you want it to be drawn on the surface, you can enable Surface, or it can be drawn based on the location of the 3D cursor. 
Enabling only first will make only the very first point of your curve stick to the surface. If you're not happy with the shape, you can select any of the points and transform them using Blender's basic tools. Enable proportional editing and scroll the mouse wheel to increase its influence, and this will transform connected areas together. If a point is too sharp, you can scale it and it will smooth out the curve. You can also extrude points of the curve. This can be useful for refining a mesh and adding just a little bit extra to the curve. If you need some more points to add extra bends to your curves, you can select the two surrounding points and right-click, subdivide. This will give you another point in between the two you selected, and now you can have more control over the shape of the curve. As well as using the tail to create a traditional tail, we can also get a bit creative with it and make a mermaid tail. Let's start off with a base mesh here, and we're simply going to delete the legs of the model. Now we can drag and drop our tail asset into this project and draw our tail curving backwards coming from the hips. You'll have to play with the tail size settings to get it to sit roughly around your character's waist, and it may not be perfect, but we can fix it in a minute. Now select the mermaid tail shape and scale and rotate this so it looks correct. When you're happy with the overall shape, we can right click on the tail and convert to mesh. And this will remove the geometry node system. And now we can enter edit mode and fix the transition from tail to body. If you wanted to take this further, you can merge both parts together and remesh them to start sculpting to create whatever design you like. If you wanted to use this for a game, you would draw the tail facing directly downwards. Then you can rig it and curl it up into the correct position for your character. The wings are another geometry node system, albeit a bit simpler than the horns and tails. All you have to do is draw the shape of the wings, and the geometry nodes will fill in the shape for you and give it some thickness. The wings also have a mirror modifier applied by default, so if your character only has one wing, you can delete the modifier. The wings geometry node system will not give you a fully finished rigged wing. This is purely designed for concept art and sculpting as a base mesh. You can make your base shape, and then you'll have to sculpt, retopologize, and make your own custom rig for your wing. If you want your wing to have a little bit of shape when you draw it, we can create a very basic plane and give it the subdivision modifier and create a curved shape. Now if we draw our curve with the surface option enabled, we can draw our wing on this plane and the wing will follow the shape of it. The inside of the wings may look jagged, and this is just because of how the geometry node system fills in the shape. If you want to smooth out the mesh a little bit, you can add the remesh modifier and the smooth modifier. This will smooth out the mesh and give you a nicer base to work from. When the basic shape of your wings is finished, you'll probably want to sculpt them to refine them and add details, and we can do this very easily. Simply right-click on the wings and convert to mesh. If you added the remesh modifier, you'll already have some details, so you can go into sculpt mode and start adding details to your wings. The ears are made with a custom rig that allows you to push and pull the ear mesh. Select the ear rig and enter pose mode in the top left. Now you can select any of the ear bones and start moving, rotating, or scaling them to create whatever ear shape you want. If you set up your preferences correctly, you can also open up the Asset Browser and navigate to the Adjustable Mannequin folder. In here, you'll see all the ear presets. With nothing selected, simply double-click one of the ear presets and it'll apply it to the rig. In order to use the ear presets and assets, we need to do a little bit of setup so that Blender has everything enabled. First of all, go to Edit, Preferences, and under Add-ons, enable Pose Library. This allows you to make full use of the Asset Browser within Blender. If this is not enabled, you may be able to see the asset library, but it might not actually apply the presets. Next, in order to access the presets in any Blender file, we can go to Edit, File Paths, and under the Asset Library section, click the plus icon. Now locate the folder that contains the fantasy body parts. If you bought the fantasy body parts on their own, you can find that folder, but if you got it through the adjustable mannequin, you'll have to find that folder instead. Declaring this folder as an asset library tells Blender that any Blender file in this directory can allow its shared assets to be used in any Blender project. The name of the directory should be automatically generated for you, but you can give this a name if you like. If you set up your preferences correctly, you'll now have access to the asset browser, and this makes importing the fantasy body parts very easy. All we have to do is open the asset browser and go to the adjustable mannequin folder and select assets. In here, you'll see all of the body parts, now all you have to do is drag and drop them directly into your scene. When you drag and drop, it will place it in the scene wherever the mouse cursor was, so you'll need to press Alt-G to get it back to the center. Some of the assets, such as the tail, will automatically import all of the other necessary objects that it needs, but you can simply hide these from the outliner by clicking the checkbox beside them. It will also import the curve profiles for the tail and horns, so you may need to move them so that they're visible. Sometimes they can be hidden amongst other objects. If you want to pose your fantasy character, you'll need to attach the body parts to your character's rig, and we can do this with object constraints. 
Make sure that your character is in a T-pose and you haven't moved the origin point of your horns. Press Alt-G to reset the location, and if your horns move, then you can head back into edit mode and fix their location so that they sit on the head correctly. Now we can add the constraint to the horns. With the horns selected, in the Properties tab on the right, go to the Constraints tab, and we want to add the Child of constraint. You can use the eyedropper to select the rig, but make sure to select the rig, not the object, as we want to attach the object to the head bone. Then, under the new Bone section that appears, you can search for the bone you want to attach to, in this case, the head. The horns shouldn't move, but if they do, selecting Set Inverse or Clear Inverse might get them closer to the head. Now all we have to do is fine-tune the position of the horns in edit mode until they sit nicely on the head. Now when you pose your character or use the presets, the horns should follow the head. We can do this exact same process with the ears, wings, and tails. The only difference is that the wings will be attached to the chest bone and the tail will be attached to the hip bone. The ears will follow the exact same process as the horns as they will also be attached to the head bone. By default, the horns and wings have a mirror modifier applied to them, but in order to create asymmetrical horns, you'll have to duplicate the geometry nodes object. With the horn selected, you can delete the mirror modifier, then duplicate your horn and press S, X, minus 1. This will flip it to the other side of the head. Because you duplicated the horns, these will have separate geometry node systems that you can play with individually. If you want to add more details to the body parts, like scars or battle damage, we'll need to convert the models to a mesh. The horns, wings, and tails are geometry node systems, so to sculpt, we need them to be a mesh. We can do this by right-clicking on them and choosing Convert, Convert to Mesh. Keep in mind this will remove the geometry nodes so you will no longer be able to control the curve or the parameters. Once you've done that, you can sculpt using whatever method you prefer. You can use multi-resolution, dynamic topology, or remeshing. The ears are already a mesh, so for those you could use multi-resolution. If you use dynamic topology or remeshing, they won't work with the rig correctly. And that's it for the fantasy body parts. I know it's a lot to take in, but hopefully this will make your fantasy character designs come to life a lot more quickly. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.